Okay, and then I need to do an audio check real quick. This is a test of the emergency Twitch system. Yep, we're good. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm going to do one more test of Audacity. Okay. I still sound <laughs> low. Why am I so low? Okay, better. Okay. Ready? Yep. 333. Three, three. <clears throat> no, not 333. 233. Three, three. Let me double check that. 233. Two, three, three. Okay. <clears throat> Where is this Microsoft thing? Oh, well, whatever. Okay. You ready? <clears throat> <clears throat> hey, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 233 of the Security Podcast here on the N30 Network. I'm I'm Heim Cohen. Tom is there. I'm is here. He there? He's there. He's wearing his really awesome EFF shirt. I the am. Problem, the problem with the EFF shirts is I buy them every year, and every year they fit once. And on that day, I wear it, I stain it, and I don't know why. It's just <laughs> the EFF shirts. And then I can't wear it again, and it makes me sad because I love the EFF. And every I year... Also... I also got this nice nifty sticker, which is really hard to see on webcam, but I have that uh, too. I, I need to throw this on my uh, on my laptop, but I haven't yet. We have all we got all the stickers because I am a super duper paid member, but nice. what you should do come back with a warrant. I don't know if we can do that, but absolutely. <laughs> anyway, so so again in the new year. Tom, we have we have three stories. Tom's going to explain the first one on Microsoft Elasticsearch, and then we're going to get into some other things. But the first story, I really, really can't explain. So I'm hoping that he can explain it because he was venting at me at how terrible this was. And I'm like, I've never heard of this. Yeah, so uh, let me see. Which one? There's a lot of terrible things. Oh, the Microsoft thing? Yes, yes. Start yeah. with the Microsoft Elasticsearch. So Microsoft ran into an issue uh, where they leaked 250 million customer service and support records. Um, now, just so you know, if you've just like bought Windows or Office or something, it's, it's not you. Um, this is for people who have contacted Microsoft about getting support. Like if, ever, if you've ever opened up a tech support case with Microsoft and me being in tech for a long time, I have had to open up stuff with Microsoft. Um, so yeah, I'm probably in here somewhere. Uh, but 250 million records. Now, what exactly was leaked was email addresses, IPs, locations, uh, descriptions of uh, customer service claims and cases, support agent emails, case numbers, resolutions, remarks, comments, ticket comments, um, internal notes marked as confidential. Uh, and that was about it. So not like credit card numbers or anything like that, uh, but it's still pretty bad. Um, now, how this happened is there's a product out there called Elasticsearch. Uh, Elasticsearch was this uh, this free product that got turned into, uh, basically people built a company around it. Um, it does some really cool stuff. It allows you to shove a bunch of data into an Elasticsearch cluster and slice it up six ways to Sunday. Uh, you can think of it as like super powered SQL. If you want queries and analytics, if you want to do analysis on giant data sets, if you've got so much data that it can't fit on a hard drive in your house, Elasticsearch could probably do that search for you. It's really cool. Uh, the downside is Elasticsearch is absolutely a tragedy when it comes to security or authentication or protection of any kind. By default, Elasticsearch is 100% open. No authentication, no password, not even like defaults. Like literally, it's just out on the net for anyone to get to whenever they feel like it. You just walk right up. It, it would be like um, having... I don't know, like a, a back end to a website. Like it would be like if you could just click log in on our WordPress site to get right to uh, right to our back end to modify post or anything like that. Uh, so completely open. Now, 
Elasticsearch does offer some security stuff, usernames, passwords, and stuff for free, but not under an open source license. And you've got to sign up for like one of their free support license things to get that. Uh, so by default, it's just 100% insecure. Uh, unfortunately, the person at Microsoft that threw this up there to do some analysis didn't realize that, put it up on the net, and it was exposed. Um, now, it has since been taken down, uh, but yeah, this is actually uh, one of the things I wanted to cover is that defaults save lives and defaults, you know, put people at great risk. Uh, Elasticsearch being by default in an insecure mode. We've actually blasted MongoDB for this exact same behavior back in the day. They've since gotten better. Um, but if by default you launch a product and it is insecure out of the gate, this stuff happens and it will continue to happen. Uh, products need to be secure out of the box or at least configured in such a way that the user isn't going to hurt themselves with it. If, you're, if your car said, oh, well, it's okay. The airbags are there, but you've got to toggle these switches to turn them on. And oh yeah, the seatbelts, they don't really work by default. You've got to hook up this thing to this thing to make them work. We would have a whole lot more people in car crashes. We have learned that that's not a really good idea. So why are we doing the same things with software? It's the router model. It's the, it's, they don't want to deal with the support support call. So they, the installer just doesn't secure the router. And then, uh, then somebody says you have to secure it. So you either don't secure it and everyone connects or you do secure it. And, and then somebody, you go to grandma's house and they forgot their password and now you're stuck. So what they do is they put the password on the box. But that's one of the things they were saying for any sort of new internet appliance going forward. If you buy it, it needs to have auto updates and it needs to at least be force you to put some sort of security or password on the box. That's not hard coded into the device, into the, into the strings. But again, that takes a long time, and unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to happen. It's just, it's really unfortunate, because if it was just by default, just auto-generate a password in an admin user account, a lot of different products do that. I, I use a ton of different software products every day, and a lot of them I configure, when you get done with the installer, when you install the package, it'll just spit out a random string. I'll say, okay, your username is admin, your password is blah. And it's like 16 randomized characters. That, that's all it would take to prevent these kinds of tragedies, uh, tragedies in the future. Uh, why this isn't a standard for software development, I will never know. Because the software developers just send it to incident response and they assume that incident response will deal with it. It's somebody else's problem. And I try to teach that to my students. And I go, if you're going to write code, please, please think of the security. Don't pass it to the security department. That's not the right answer. You can you can do their job too if you do it. You can make double this. I don't know if you can make double the salary. But you can make double the salary if you just secure your stuff. What's, uh, what's really hopeful about that statement is that there's a security department at all. I yes. have worked in literally one company where there was a security department and that's it i mean i bring security uh breach i bring security information to the it department and then they tell me they're wrong so what's less than a security department no yeah i mean so <laughs> so yeah um if you have opened uh cases with microsoft at all hopefully you're getting an email uh, hopefully they're letting you know but uh for the majority of people out there probably doesn't affect you. I mean, do you change your password? Do you... Uh, there's there's nothing really you can do here. Now, if it was if it was something super embarrassing where they're just like, dude, did you just try to restart Windows? Come on, man. You know that's step one. Then yeah, that embarrassing fact about you is now probably out floating around the net somewhere. Uh, but there's no passwords in here. There's no hashes. There's no nothing. Uh, your email address was in there, so you might get some spam. The one thing I am going to warn you about, if you are one of these people and you have asked Microsoft for support, you are probably going to get an uptick in people claiming to be from Microsoft. Uh, that scam where they call you and they say, oh, I'm so-and-so from Microsoft. Can you give me your password or install this remote access utility? Um, now they'll actually have legitimate data to, to go back on and say, oh yeah, remember when you called about, about that problem with Outlook that one time? Yeah, we do, we do. And look, here's your case details right here. So you know I'm from Microsoft. So now 
these scammers have got you know actual legitimate information backing up their their heinous claims so i just recently got an uptick from a public service uh, electric and gas here in new jersey because they are working on my street and what I always get annoyed is they put the their bucket truck in front of my driveway while they're working on the trees. And then they go, wait, you need to leave? Why would you need to leave? Just, I don't get it. And I'm like, yeah, but if you would have told me yesterday, hey, we're working on your house or near your house, we may block your driveway. I would have solved the problem, but you don't tell me. So how come the scammers and the hacker, the scammers find that information but for me i have to like beg the guy to move the bucket truck because they blocked me in my driveway and i have to go somewhere like i want to be on the scammers like list of uh not the scammers list but i want how i want to know how they get their information because i I want that information too the only solution here is to have the scammers drive the bucket trucks it's it's because I know I'm going to get an uptick and I have to schedule an appointment. They want to move my meter. I don't know what that I don't know what that entails, but apparently on Monday I have to just randomly leave four hours for them to come in and do this thing. And I have to be home. I mean, I have cameras on the it's outside. Kind of I'll know what like we'll leave the echoes on and let's just let them listen all day to if they're working. It's in the basement. I can lock the house. They don't feel comfortable. So somebody now has to stay home with them. That's really annoying. Anyway, um, it seems fun. It's like, yeah, we can just stay home. So the next thing is LastPass. So on the show, we've recommended LastPass. We don't. I don't know if we can continue to recommend LastPass, but for right now, we, we in the past we've recommended LastPass. They suffered an outage over the weekend, and I didn't hear about it. I mean, I heard about it now. Uh, I didn't get affected by it. And we'll explain that why in a second. But the problem was is that they didn't immediately come out and say, yeah, we're noticing something. We could be just a fluke, whatever it is, but we're looking into it. It took them three days and a whole bunch of uh, hoot and hollering on Twitter. And then they said, said, yeah, 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 we have an outage. In the meantime, their Chrome extension went down. That is not good, especially for LastPass that we're telling people has all your passwords and everything else. Now they're claiming nothing. They can't decrypt it anyway, but that's not that, – that the optics are really, really bad because it is your data. It's being stored there. And, yes, it's not decryptable unless you have the, the master password, but it's just not a good look that, that they should have uh, warned people about as soon as something happened. Yeah, I... I have had to put in one, uh, and just just one, uh, or I'm sorry, I've had to put in two uh, LastPass support tickets uh, this year, and I haven't been thrilled with the the timings of their responses. Um, I I get that you know they they were a startup, but they're not anymore, right? They they got bought by Logman, which is a massive company, uh, and they have just kind of been dropping the ball a little bit. So their their Chrome extension disappeared because they accidentally removed it from the Chrome store. Now, I, mistakes happen, right? But this really affected a whole lot of people. Uh, so they said, oh, we'll just use the website. Well, the website is not as secure as the Chrome extension for several different reasons, but... Um, it just, it's not a good look. And having an outage that you A, 100% deny over and over and over again until it hit the tech blogs and the tech blogs started, you know, sending out inquiries and saying, hey, LastPass, are you sure you don't have an outage? Here's a pile of people with problems. And then they say, oh, wait, we might have one. It's just really. I mean, that's cable company nonsense. That's what my cable company does. Shady, shady is the wrong word for it because it's not shady. It's just, it's disappointing. I'm not mad LastPass. I'm just disappointed. Well, I mean, especially for the paid customer. So if you're a paying customer, especially enterprise or whatever it is, and something like this happens, I mean, may, maybe they, they went out first to them. But again, that's something that you, you do need to disclose. It's people are relying on you. And your mantra from the beginning was, we are everywhere. This is the one password you're going to need forever and ever. And we were everywhere. And I think people are okay with, we're suffering an outage. Like if you tell people, hey, we're suffering an outage, most yeah. people – are generally okay with that. And I've explained this, not just to, I mean, to people. I've explained this to the cable company. Hey, um, 
My internet's out. Yes, I've rebooted. I've done everything. It's okay to be out. It's fine. I don't need, what is it, five ninety nine point nine 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 uptime. Yes, it's really annoying that it's out now, but if you tell me you're working on it, I'm good with that. Same with LastPass. If you're out, okay, I'll, I'll solve the problem. Don't lie. Just don't lie. Yeah. Just, just yeah. S- something's up. And especially with something like this. And I, I thought that that's, that's what we were going for. And it's not apparently. It's just, it's just disappointing because people, people understand stuff breaks down. They understand that these systems don't operate perfectly in perpetuity. Like, as stuff happens, stuff gets out of date, certificates expire, hardware breaks, network links go down, BGP routes get mangled, like a bunch of bad stuff can happen in the tech sphere to, to cause an outage. And it's okay. We understand as long as you're working on it and we know that you're having a bad day when there's an outage. We get it. Especially us who have worked in the tech sector. We've we've had the the hair on fire, you yeah. know, paged at 3 a.m. moments, right? We we hate it too, but we're there in solidarity. One of my favorite things is when big companies have major issues. Like when, when Google or Facebook had big outages, the, the outpour on Twitter from tech people to the, the Facebook or Google or whoever support people saying, it's cool, we understand take care of yourself. And I I hope you get through this quickly like that. It warms my heart. But when a company is just denying left and right, that there's anything wrong, when there's clearly something going on, it it just, it makes me mad. I mean, like we said, just, uh, Hey, uh, we we're noticing something, your data is safe or we're noticing something, uh, more information soon, whatever it is. I mean, yeah, they keep data. But remember, their data, it, what they hold is is an encrypted blob. So at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world. It's just that you couldn't decrypt this blob to get your passwords, which, I mean, is a fairly important thing to have at all times. However, the good news was is that if somebody stole all that un- encrypted blob, your data is, if you had a strong master password, they would have to decrypt it, which would be almost nearly impossible. So, So that was good, but just... You hold our data. Talk to us. Now, I wonder if the, the last two stories, whether it was Microsoft or this, was a GDPR uh, violation at some level or whatever, California CCPA. I don't um, think so. As, as far so for the leaked data um, from Microsoft, maybe California, uh, maybe GDPR. But, but then again, they came out right after it happened. Um, because because breaches happen, right? Sure, it's a violation, but they handled it well, right? They they were notified by a researcher. They got the thing taken down within 24 hours. Uh, they they notified people. Um, they let the security researcher make it public right after they had removed it, and they're generally doing all the right things as far as breaches go. A the the data wasn't like super critical, right? It's not good, but it's not it's not social security numbers, right? It's not. It's not home addresses. It's it's nothing like super critical. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm actually pretty happy with how Microsoft handled this. It's unfortunate that it happened, uh, but I'm going to put the blame on the software defaults rather than Microsoft. Sure, they should have known better. Sure, maybe they should have put this on an intranet blocked off from the rest of the internet. But at the end of the day, the defaults are what caused the issue not necessarily the sport person who may or may not have been trained on how this software works. Well, either way, it's, it's once again, all, anytime we talk about privacy breaches and, and data breaches, just get in front of it. It's always the cover up that's worse than the actual crime. Just yep. say, so we, we notice something's up. Do not lie about it. Do not just, we're, we're working on it. And hopefully you can solve it because to come out, oh, they've been in our systems for six months and we just realized it. That, that's also not a good look. So yeah, it happens, but at least just own up to it and people respect you more and we can go from there. Yeah. When stuff happens, just just be transparent. Let people know. Don't, don't dance around the truth and, and give us a stupid PR thing like LastPass did. Just, just come out and say it. So... Let's go to our last story. So, uh, again, Apple's uh, fighting with the FBI in the news. Basically, the FBI wants the data from 
the Pensacola Army Base shooting. So I think like eight weeks ago, a Saudi national who was working on an army base in the United States training with uh, with our soldiers uh, opened fire, killed a bunch of uh, soldiers, and now they're going to Apple and saying, hey, we need this data. Apple initially said, here you go. Here is everything we have. Like immediately in 24 hours, as soon as they could. Again, they usually are very preemptive and say, hey, we noticed this happened. This is the data we have. Because again, Apple doesn't like terrorists. They, they, I mean, I don't think it's they they value privacy, which we're going to get to, but they 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 don't like terrorism and they want to help when they can. And they knew that this was coming, so they did it. They did as much as we they could. Um in this whole uh, attack, the the armed person actually shot the phone, the, the the two iPhones that 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 they needed, and then all of a sudden the FBI comes later and says, "Hey, there was another phone there that we didn't tell you about. Can we get that data?" <clears throat> and Apple gives that data, and then it turns into, "No, we need decrypted iMessages, and or we don't have data for it." And then now the FBI is like, "You need to help us decrypt this," and we start the process again. And 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 then then we find out that the FBI has a way with through these secret companies like Cellubrite and Grey Cat and whatever else. So there are ways, not easy ways, but there are ways that doesn't involve Apple. And we can go on the conspiracy theories, but again, Apple is in front of the FBI again and they're fighting this. And the good news is, is that I, I do trust Apple to try their hardest. At the end of the day, if it really gets to court, they'll probably lose, but we don't know. <clears throat> yeah. So what's interesting uh, is that Apple actually had um, – I'm trying to figure out when this came out. Um, here we go. More than two years ago. Uh, this comes from an exclusive by Reuters. They've got sources backing this up. Uh, but more than two years ago – uh, Apple just let the FBI know that it planned to offer users end-to-end -end encryption when storing their phone data on iCloud. End-to-end -end encrypted iCloud backups for your devices. That's huge. That's an incredible feature. That's amazing. Um, and the FBI threw a massive fit. Uh, so massive, in fact, that Apple Legal actually killed the project outright. And they said, no, we, we can't do this. We have to keep giving the feds uh, iCloud backups. That's really shady. That is awful for end users. And it actually completely undermines Apple's marketing uh, about privacy and caring about the users and fighting the man and all the nice stuff that they've been doing in the public eye. This completely undercuts everything that they've done. Apparently, they're okay with fighting the man when it's pretty convenient. Uh, but when the FBI threw a fit about end-to-end -end encrypted backups, Apple decided to walk it back. Now, amazingly enough, uh, who didn't decide to consult with the FBI before launching this feature, who didn't actually care about law enforcement's request, uh, Google, uh, their, their Android backups, There's uh, you, you can do end-to-end -end encrypted Android backups now. Uh, let's put let's let's, let's cool. put a let's put a star by this. Let's put a little asterisk. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yes. So Tom is one hundred percent right. So Apple had that, and and they're citing, hey, look, uh, what I one of the one of the excuses that Apple legal probably could have used is one, we don't want to get into this battle, but two, think of the front facing that a, uh, a customer forgets their iCloud password. Because I do know a lot of people that that every two years, every three years, they get a new iPhone, they go in, and now they have to, inc this includes myself, what's my iCloud password? I don't remember. And I have to do a password reset and everything else. And they, they did a calculated difference and said, you know what, this is probably not worth it. Because if you don't know, Yes, iMessages are encrypted, but if you if you store all that stuff in iCloud, you're putting it in an unencrypted place in the cloud. It's the if you really want the encryption, and I think this is where it matters. You can connect it to your computer, and then you can do it that way. Android does not have that. I don't think. I don't think Android has it where you can blob it, it to they, your computer. They do, but it's usually through ADB and terminal commands, and it's it's not a user facing yeah. service. 
Which the so like iPhone, can, it's it's i uh, iTunes. So you connect to iTunes and you do encrypted backup on the phone, and then you can turn off iCloud if you want. But then that reconvenience of uh, you get a new phone or you or you do it, you put you put your passcode in and you wait two hours and the whole phone is there is definitely a nice feature. They didn't want to have to deal with the geniuses dealing with, oh, I forgot it and everything else, which is a really valid, look, that's uh, customer service wise, that's a valid thing. But as you said before, the pre-show, they should have given us an option. Like, hey, uh, if you do this, like put 10 dialogue boxes, we can't help you, we can't help you, we can't help you. Do you still want to do it? This is what you're missing out on and let people make the choice. Again, the, the tyranny of the default. Uh, Google has it and I think, I think what they do is they just use the secure enclave on their phone, the the Titan chip, and I didn't even know that I had it. So that that's pretty cool. So, so yeah, what what happens is that um, the basically the there's an encryption key that is randomly generated on the device. That key is then encrypted with either the user's uh, lock screen pin, pattern, or passcode. Uh, and then that's used to encrypt and mangle up the data, and then that's shipped off to Google. So Google at no point in this transaction actually holds uh, the decryption key to your data, which is really cool. Now, this is just for Android Pie and later. So older versions of Android cannot use this feature. Um, so it's it's really nice uh, because, you know, people forgetting iCloud passwords, yeah, that, that happens a lot because you don't really use them a lot. Uh, especially if you have enabled Face ID, ID, you don't really use it for much of anything except for authorizing certain little things within Apple's ecosystem uh, or logging in on the web. But if you tie it to a lock screen pin, you know, the thing that people use a bunch, um, you know, probably less on the iPhones with Touch ID and Face ID, but you still have to use it, especially after a phone restarts. Um, you completely short circuit forgetting, uh, which could be a really novel solution. Now, I, I think you're right. Do you want to enable this by default? Well, maybe maybe you don't for the first couple major releases of iOS, right? Maybe maybe you give it an option. You say, all right, you can, you can turn this on, but just be warned, like put up, put up a screen, make them type in the right cloud password, and they say, okay, if you forget your backup pin, it's gone. Nothing we can do. You're out of luck. And then after a few versions, after you see some adoption and some numbers and some support cases roll in for this, and you're more adept at handling those types of customer service issues, then you default it on, right? Because you it doesn't have to be an all or nothing thing. You can slow roll this feature and get people used to the idea. I see. I think they also see it as, so we use WhatsApp. We have a WhatsApp group. You are welcome to join it. But one of the, the the downsides of WhatsApp that we're fully transparent about is that you can enable backups. You can back up to your Google Drive. I think Google Drive is the only one. And, and so as encrypted as it is, it now it goes into somebody's Google Drive. And unfortunately, at that point, you can be encrypted. But they already know who's in the group based on the metadata, and then they can get they can get the information from there. Yeah. Again, WhatsApp is using the Signal protocol for the messages that it encrypted, but other features that they made it say that you can do it. I have a feeling that Apple has through the other ways of getting it all that data to the point that says fiduciary as a money as a money thing, it's not worth it. Uh, the, the so few people that would actually turn this on are probably very pretty limited. It just doesn't make sense for us. And that is a huge knock. It's, it's Google does it. And I have a feeling that they do it just to say they do it. But unfortunately, the Google has all the other information through your searches and everything else that it's one of those, it may be better, but I, I can't really see how other than to say they have this. The the really unfortunate thing is Apple did not plan on this getting out, mm -hmm. right? This was a leak. It was then confirmed by several different sources, uh, both in the FBI and at Apple. Um, people that were at Apple, people who had since left, uh, former and current FBI staff members. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a thing. Apple did not want this hitting the media. And now that it has... I'm just waiting for the Google attack ads. Apple claims to protect your privacy, but do they end and end end to end encrypt your backups? No, but we do. Come to Android tomorrow, right? I cannot wait to see the advertisements come out, just knocking, uh, knocking Apple for all this stuff. Um, it's it's really really unfortunate. I 
I wish they would have done it. It would have been nice. I would have turned that on as soon as the feature launched. Like you, I think like you said before, it would be a nice feature to turn on and then you can, uh, what's it called, that you have to dig for it and then slowly but surely add to it with all the warnings that say, hey, by the way, uh, if you lose this, we you are hosed. That's it. You have to start from the beginning. So I maybe it looks like it's dead in the water, but maybe after this Apple resurrects it, who knows? But I it would be it would be absolutely incredible to me. And it would actually give me more faith in Apple if they did come out and say, Yeah, okay, we messed up here. We're sorry, and we're gonna work on this again. We're gonna roll it out in the next version of iOS. Like like, give me Apple keynote presentation where, where Tim Cook comes out on stage and says, yeah, we, we messed up. Here's what we're going to do to fix it. That would be amazing. Or they make iCloud, not iCloud, but their iCloud uh, folders that they want encrypted. I don't know. If the, I don't know. Does the device, the, the apps that you do have to be encrypted? I think the data has to, but I don't know if the apps have to. Um, I mean, I mean, they don't. No, have to. But that said, you can, if you had a list of applications on somebody's device, like let's say WhatsApp, and you were targeting a vulnerability against one of those applications, let's say WhatsApp, not that that's been in the news recently, um, then yeah, that could give you enough leverage over, you know, enough information about your target's device that you could leverage into a vulnerability. True. Okay. So fair so enough. I, I think encrypt it all. Encrypt all the things. Okay. Well, anyway, we are over time. Again, you have any more questions? Uh, we have a WhatsApp group. Tweet us. Find us. If you get a hold of us, we will throw you in the WhatsApp group. That's the barrier to entry. And we have a good time there. So, anyway, we will see everyone next week. Bye, everyone. See you, everyone. Thirty-one, thirty minutes and a half. That's good. All right, let me see. Yes.